Hey everyone, welcome back to my podcast, Joan's Soapbox, episode 2. And currently I am drinking Korean banana milk. It's one of my favorites. <coughs> this is ASMR magic for you. If you haven't tried it, I would suggest that you should. And if you're allergic to bananas, then I did not say that at all. And today's topic is going to be a requested one from my cousin all the way out in Dubai. And they asked me if I could talk about toxic relationships. And that could be romantic or platonic, but I'm going to touch based on both aspects and hopefully sharing my past experiences in my life hopefully maybe you can get some insight and maybe you'll learn something and then you could use that as reference for future encounters when you interact with people and literally my cousin texted me saying you know when it's not good for you but you're still staying and I feel like we all relate in that scenario and then they said I've told my friend okay you could go still stay in that relationship and deal with it until you can't deal with it anymore but I know one day one day you'll say it's enough is enough and then all of a sudden you're gonna go back to that person still hashtag stay toxic and for me, I relate to this many times in the past, like when, probably more when I was in my teenage years where you were afraid or I was afraid that I would lose a person and so I would just deal with whatever came at me and just so that they wouldn't leave, I would just deal with all the negativity and even when I knew it wasn't good for me, I still stayed because I had this hope that a miracle would happen and then everything would get better. But it never got better. It just got worse and worse and worse. And until whether the person that I was with ended up just doing the wrong in whatever way. It could be cheating. It could be like, them just lying or it could just some sort of betrayal then even sometimes with that people still stay in relationships but for me it would take just like that one big moment and then I'm just telling myself as much as it sucks or it, it hurts I have to leave and move on but unfortunately it's sad to think about that it has to go up to that scenario until you realize that it's not worth it anymore instead of just realizing when you first feel that negative feeling that I should leave and when I heard about a little bit what's going on with my cousin's friend I thought about the details that are involved such as long distance relationships and it's very hard to have a long distance relationship even when i was in one and i would see the person every other month or we would see each other every month but we would alternate with each other's places every month it still was difficult to maintain that relationship and i'm not saying that you need to see your partner every single day but to see them not as often as you think you should it can get really i was gonna say in tagalog delicado like very delicate and what more if you're really far away like you didn't have that convenience where you could see each other once a month you just couldn't see each other for to be announced like you just don't know and you live in different countries, different continents, things like that. And all I can say is communication is key. If you and your partner can't communicate, then 
it won't, the relationship won't survive. And the reason why I can say that is because I have experienced long distance where we communicated every single day. We might not have seen each other in person physically as often, but because we were in communication, at least we were able to maintain a healthy relationship. And when I've experienced those relationships, I actually felt that the relationship got stronger because we weren't just using the physical aspect of trying to keep the relationship alive. We got to know each other better and create a stronger foundation with getting to know each other over the phone or over video call or even like old snail mail. But other than just like the regular meeting in person, hanging out in person, and then also doing that, but not as often. So for me, sometimes there's like pros and cons when you have to talk more with the person because you have to, because there's no, there's not, it's not that accessible to see each other all the time. However, if you don't talk all the time, and I'm not saying every single minute of the day, I'm saying if you don't at least communicate once throughout the day and you just leave them hanging, questioning, wondering, especially us girls, like we have a million thoughts in our head if we don't get not necessarily reassurance, but just like an update, just saying like that you're okay, that you're just doing something and that's why you're just not responding. Like once we get to know what's up, like we leave you alone, hopefully most girls. But if you just don't respond, it's like the end of the world. Like we just start freaking out. And so the scenario that I was hearing is that what happens if you and your partner break up because of long distance and the reason why I say toxic relationship is because you stay because you are afraid that Everything that you worked on together when you were still physically always being able to see each other, this and that. And then you guys had to part ways physically. And then you're afraid that because one person is somewhere else and you're over here. And then you're thinking that that person could possibly be doing something else in the background. And then you guys end up breaking up. And then that new person that is now with your partner, your upset because you helped your partner grow as a person like you guys built each other up and then now you broke up and now the new person just gets to be with your partner with all the beneficial new personality traits or physical traits that they probably didn't have when you first started dating, but now they do because they met you, they dated you, and now you're out of the picture and then they get to start with that version of your partner and then move on from there. And when I heard that whole scenario, I get it. I really do. I remember when I was like in my teenage years and I would just be all in my head thinking, it's unfair. It's unfair that once me and so-and-so are not together anymore, then this person gets to pretty much experience and, 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 and just have a person that was a, is a whole nother version of what they are than before, right? And I would just stay i would stay in the relationship because i worked so hard to be with that person to help them grow and then just to be dumped and have someone else relish that and for me if you know that you're both struggling if you know that you're not happy and even let's say your partner was broke or your partner wasn't as stylish or your partner didn't have these like best 
eating habits and then all of a sudden now they have they're making money now that they're dressing well and like they're like well groomed now that they're all of a sudden exercising and like they look fit and then you guys break up and now this new person comes into the picture and gets to like appreciate experience all of that it's like i wouldn't stay i wouldn't stay if while all of that happened your partner elevated and then that person still doesn't communicate with you if they don't respond and they leave you hanging they make you feel less than how you really truly deserve like is it worth it no like it's not worth it seriously i would rather be alone than just stay because someone just upgraded <laughs> because of me and i was telling my cousin that if you truly love someone and this is how i really feel and i had to learn this the hard way many years later if you really love someone whether or not they're not with whether or not they're with you you would wish them the best and I do believe that things happen for a reason. So if that person was in your life at that moment and maybe that was your purpose for why you were in their lives was to help them, guide them and to build them up and then now that they're standing on their feet and they're able and capable of just being this new version of themselves like version 2.0 and then it doesn't work out with you for whatever reason because of distance because of the communication because whatever something is just in the way i would let it go i would let it go and i would just be happy that i was able to help that person and you can all you could say oh it's easier said than done i love this person blah 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 i'm gonna fight for it if you're struggling now, you are going to struggle later. And to each their own, people will stay in relationships most of the time, but they're not fully happy. And I'm not saying they're going to be 100% happy all the time, but some people just stay to stay stable, meaning that they just want to have someone to have someone, but not really because they like want to be with that person. It's just convenient. And for me, I just feel that if ever I just feel negative or sad, yes, it is important to try to work through things and, and, and see if you can overcome whatever problems you may have. But if it's not working and you're just staying because you helped that person be a better version of themselves than where they were when you first met them, and you're just scared that someone else is going to be rewarded with version 2.0 of this person, I feel that deep down inside, that person is still who they were when you first met them. And yeah, things could like get better here and there with the partner of yours, but in the end of the day, it just wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be if they ended up with someone else that's not you. And you shouldn't beat yourself up if you're not with that person anymore. Because like, why would you want to be with someone who you know doesn't want to be with you? And or won't treat you the way how you deserve to be treated. And every time I just feel sad or some sort of negativity towards a person, I always just tell them right away, like, this is what's bothering me. And if we can't work it out, then let's just, like, go our other like, part ways. And that's the same thing, not just in romantic relationships, even in platonic relationships, like, even with my family, when they think that they know better than I do and they want to pressure me to do something that I don't necessarily want to do that is very toxic I, I just tell them honestly how I feel 
And I know many, many people can't. It takes steps, but if you're able to speak up and say what's on your mind and express how you truly feel, that is the way for them to know what's going on. And I know that some people can still speak up and then the toxic thing that'll happen after will be like, oh, like you're not supposed to talk back and this and that, you're like disrespectful. Well, you're just never gonna win when it comes to those kind of relationships. And so for me, I just have to walk away, figure out how to get out of that environment because it's just going to take a toll on you. It'll make you like have no sleep. You'll be stressed. Your body will be sore. You're just going to overthink so much until you figure out a way to get out. A way to just not have that person really always be in your life. Like it's okay to, like you don't have to block them. Like most people do. Like I'm very a firm believer on blocking people but if you can't block someone I would just distance myself as much as I can if you just can't block them so another form of toxic relationships is friendships when your friend thinks that you are supposed to be obligated to do whatever it is that they tell you to do type of thing or your friend feels that literally like you just owe them something and when it comes to those kind of friendships that I've encountered 10 out of 10 times I really just don't associate anymore I I cut those relations cut those relationships off very fast and there's nothing for me fun to dwell in gossiping or just being involved in drama or just making people feel bad about themselves like or watching content or shows or movies that are about drama i understand people want like an escape they don't want to think about their problems currently in real life so they rather deal with other people's problems or hear other people's problems like they could feel better about themselves but for me i just like silence all of that i will listen to certain people in my life that i care about and their problems but in all honesty i rather just not deal with it all together but If you ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? Like, why am I feeling so negative? There's probably some toxic thing that's around you. And it's up to you if you want to do something about it. If you want to figure out how to detox from that toxicity. And if you don't, then don't question why it's happening because you're letting it happen. That's the one thing that I never understood. When people question something... And they know the answer, but they still deal with it or they still stay, as my cousin says. And again, you can say it's because I love that person and like that's why I deal with it. But you got to think about yourself first. You got to think about your mental health. You got to think about how it affects you entirely. And if it doesn't make you feel good, there's a reason why everything like your body, your mind, everything is reacting and responding to a certain way where it just doesn't feel good. And if you think it's worth it to stay because you think it's going to get better, I honestly, from what I've experienced in the past, it doesn't get any better. You can't control people. You can only control what you can do for yourself. Like, such as what you say to people and like who you interact with and what you what like what you can do but for other people you can't tell them what to do you can't just expect that things will just happen just because you expressed it no they'll be conscious about it but that doesn't mean that everything will go your way just because you want it to so i'm just gonna leave it at that (laughs) And if you have 
any thoughts, comments, you can leave it in the video version on YouTube below. And I would hope that people don't stay in situations where they feel that they just have all this bad negative energy. It's just not worth it. You're gonna not live as long uh, and you're just going to just be super stressed and then be like me where you're just going to be doing chiropractor for, for two for two twice a week and literally um, go do cupping and go to the spa, get a massage all the time. Like it gets expensive to have that kind of lifestyle where you just have to do it because you're so tense. And for me, it's not that I choose to be in toxic situations. It's just that sometimes, real talk, it just follows you. Like, it just comes out of nowhere and you don't know why. And you ask yourself, like, did I deserve this? It's like, no, like, I didn't deserve this. And maybe it's just a test, but from the universe. And for me, I feel like I've proven time and time and again that, like, I don't need that unnecessary negativity, so I just keep just trying to stay afloat and like go through all of this maneuvering through the, the darkness and trying to find the light type of thing. But again, like I said, do your best in trying to fit, like literally get out of whatever negative, toxic situation, person, whoever that may be, because it's not worth it. And if you think that you can't find better or meet better or be with better, I'm telling you as reassurance, you can. And how can I say that? Because once that person or thing is out of your life, you will feel better. And if you don't, you can go comment and let me know that you felt the opposite. So there you go. Thank you again for listening. It's still surprising for me to have a podcast. I really appreciate for everyone who has listened to the previous episodes and this one. And that's pretty much it. Stay away from toxic people and situations. (laughs) That's all. Uh, And if you don't have me on social media, you could just look up Joan Michelle, M-I-C-H-E-L. And that's it. Thank you, thank you. Stay tuned till the next episode. Sayonara. It's the end of the video, so don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't, it will help me in the long run. Okay, bye.